ஹாய் ஹலோ வணக்கம் அண்ட் வெல்கம் பேக் டு எட் அனதர் எபிசோட் ஆன் லிட்டில் ஸ்லா யூடியூப் சேனல் ஸோ இன் ப்ரீவியஸ் வீடியோ வி சா அபவுட் தி வியூ ரிசல்ட்ஸ் ட்ரீ ஹவு டு யூஸ் வியூ ரிசல்ட்ஸ் ட்ரீ அண்ட் வேரியஸ் அதர் ஆப்ஷன்ஸ் ஆஃப் வியூவிங் தி ரிசல்ட்ஸ் தி ரெக்வஸ்ட் அண்ட் ரெஸ்பான்ஸ் சம்திங் லைக் தி டெக்ஸ்ட் வி ஹாவ் தி ரெஜெக்ட் எக்ஸ் ரெகுலர் எக்ஸ்பிரஷன் டெஸ்டர் வி ஹேட் தி பவுண்ட்ரி எக்ஸ்ட்ராக்டர் டெஸ்டர் அண்ட் வேரியஸ் அதர் HTML and other useful ways to see the results. So in this video, we are going to discuss about the second listener, which is the summary report. So before we move on to the video, this is me, our son Shanmugam. I welcome you all again to Little Sla YouTube channel. If you have not subscribed to our channel, please do subscribe to our channel. Like, comment and question your question in the feedback section, in the comment section. So now let's move on to the video. So today we are going to see about the second listener which is the summary report and to add that we have to right click on the thread group, click on add and then move to the listener which is the last option and choose the summary report. So this is one of the very basic report since we could see or we could see the number of samples of so the samples tells us how many requests that has been hit or that has been given to the requests inside the thread group and then we have the average the average response time and then we have the minimum response time then we have the maximum response time then we have the standard deviation which is the deviation between the response times and then we have the error percentage then we have the throughput so throughput tells us how much hits we have achieved for every hour and then we have the received kilobytes per second which is actually the throughput of how much data has been received and then how much data is sent to the server and then we have the average bytes and we have other options which is the errors option and then the success option where when we choose the errors we can see only the errors and when we choose the success we could see only the success and here we have the configure option where we have a lot of other options where we can save as xml or we can save the response file name we can save the encoding so for now let's have only the default items which is the save elapsed time save response message save success save sent by count save idle time save assertion results and various other options so for now let's click on done and what we will do now is let's run a quick test so we have one thread which is one user ramp up of one second and the loop count is going to be just one and let's run the test and see what happens so we have executed the test and here we can see there are two http request and that's the reason here we could see the http request is 2 and the average response time is 88 the minimum is so everything which we see here is in milliseconds and the maximum is 141 millisecond and the standard deviation is 53 which is the difference between the average and the maximum so that is the difference and in fact even we can see we could see that the difference between the minimum and average response times and there is no errors and that's why we could see it's zero percentage and the throughput is we could see it's 11.2 hits per second and then we have received 49 kilobytes per second and we have sent just 2 kilobytes per second and the average bytes is 4550 so what we are going to do now is we will have to understand the response time for each request so what we are going to do now is let's change the name So what we are going to do now is I will change this to zero one HTTP request. The second one is going to be zero two HTTP request. So now we have got two different requests, and when we run the test again, so here we can see. So since we have got one user, so each user hits both the requests separately, and hence we could see. So now we can see the difference between each request. So initially it was. one single average and one one minimum and one maximum so now we can see that for the first request the average minimum and maximum is different and for the second request 
the average response times are different so here since we have got only one request so that's the difference here so what we will do now is we will increase the number of threads to 10 and the loop count again will increase it to 10 so now we have got 10 users with 10 iterations and let's even increase the ramp up period and let me start the test and here we can see we have got multiple samples which is 10 cross 10 which is going to be 100 and we have got the test completed and here we can see there is a difference between the minimum average and the maximum response time since we have got multiple requests so each request has its own set of minimum average and maximum response times and this is how we have to evaluate the test and again the standard deviation is 24.25 which is the difference between the average the response times and since there are no errors again with this request so we could see there is 0, 0.0 percentage of errors and the throughput is we were able to achieve 10.2 requests per second which is an average of 20.4 per second so totally we have achieved 200 hits so which means we were able to complete this test in around nine seconds so here we can correlate every data so here we can see on the top that the test has got executed for nine seconds and for every second we have got 20 requests 20.4 requests which means we were able to achieve 200 hits in nine seconds so this is what again the test the little slot the little slot tells us that the number of hits by using the number of hits and the time the duration we can calculate the response times and the throughput and then we can see the received bytes so for the first request we have received 47.99 kilobyte per second and for the second request we have received 37.21 kilobytes per second and the total is the total received kilobytes is 84.51 and the sent is very less since we are just sending a very basic request it's just the get request since we are not sending any other parameters or much of a data so this is a very simple request but the response is quite big quite heavy so here we can see that the sampler results so here we can see the size in bytes and the bytes sent the response is quite high that's the reason we can see more data here and then the average bytes is around 4000 and it's around 3000 so the average is around 4239.6 bytes so this is how the summary report works and here we have an option where when we choose errors automatically only the errors will display and when we choose success so only the success will display and this is again an option button so either we can have errors or either we can have success so what we'll do now is let's choose errors and we will run the test again so it's toggle okay so let's enable it sorry i've just clicked toggle and it has got disabled so what we will do now is i've chosen errors and let's click on the run button so here we can see the test is running successfully and there are no errors and that is the reason we cannot see any errors in this part so what we will do now is we'll choose the successes part we'll just clear all the results so here we have click, cleared everything and when we run when we start the test so here we can see since we have chosen only successes we could see all the success hits us all the success response times here and this is how this works and in fact if we want to write the results in a file even we can do that so for that let's click on browse and we will enter this example let's click on let's choose summary report underscore results and when I click on open so here we have got the results so let's now run the file and see how does it work so let me run the result so the test is running again let's wait for the test to get complete so that we can see the result the test is completed and let's now open the file
and here we can see successful so the factors that we can see here are the timestamp the elapsed time the label of the request and then the response code which is the 200 and the response message is so there is no response message then we have the thread name which is thread group one of one and then the data type is text the success is true if there is no failure and then there's a failure message and then we have the bytes and then the sent bytes and then the same way we could see the group threads all threads and then the URL so this is the URL that we have used for execution and then the latency is here and then the idle time is zero and then the connect is 93 so this is how uh, this is what when we get when we do the test and so all these things you can see here so these are the data that we have collected here so in case if we just want only very few data so for that what we have to do is let's just collect few of these items so let's first uncheck every data of this and let's choose some of the very required I mean, very important data so for example let's choose something like the elapsed time the thread name the label and what the other things that we can select is okay let's just have only these three the elapsed time the label and then the thread name and let's run the test again and see what happens so here we have got three options one is append to existing file so which means the result that is getting executed now will be added at the to add it to the end of the file and if so the second option is don't start so this will not start the test and then overwrite the existing file will exactly remove every data in the file and will overwrite so what we'll do now is let's overwrite the existing test file and let's wait for the test to get complete so once it is over we can open the file and see how does it work so that is just completed now and let's open the file let us open the file and see so here we can see the four options that we have selected in the configure button which is the save elapsed time save label and save thread name so only these three items have got overwritten so this is how the summary report works i hope this video would have been very useful to you and i uh, sorry i missed few things so here we have got include group name and label and then save table data so this will help us to save the table along with the header table so when we click on save we can open the file whenever we want to retrieve the data so summary.csv so let me open it with the notepad and we can see the file so here we can see the label the samples the average response time the minimum maximum and the standard deviation so everything that we want for submitting the results to the stakeholders so here we can collect it through the save table data and I hope, I believe this video has been very useful to you. So until we meet you in another interesting video, it's bye-bye from Asan Shanmugam and Little's Law.